Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about derma rolling and if you are a regular to my channel you will know I love derma rolling. I think it's one of the best treatments ever. It's more or less halved my acne scarring. It's more or less got rid of all my skin texture and made it super smooth and it's boosted my collagen production. So if you are interested in learning more about derma rolling and learning how to do it safely in your own home then please keep watching. Okay, so there is a lot of information to get through in this video. Please, whatever you do, don't just speed through to the derma rolling procedure at the end. You need to know all the information in order to carry out this procedure safely in your own home. It's incredibly important. You may damage your skin, so please watch the entire video. Okay, so what is derma rolling and what does it do? Well, this is a derma roller. It's a little roller here and you've got lots of needles on it. When it's rolled over the skin, it punctures lots of little holes in the skin and does lots of weird and wonderful things. So what does it actually do? Well, the longer the needles, the more effect it's going to have. And there are lots of different types of needle length and I'm gonna go into that a little bit further on in the video, but what does it actually do? Okay, so any needle that is 0.5 millimeters and above, obviously the longer the needle, the better the effect you will see. But any needle that is 0.5 and above, you will get the following effects. So this will trigger collagen and elastin production. It will improve sun damage and thinning skin. It will also improve scarring, which includes acne scarring, but it does not include keloid scarring and you should never derma roll over any keloid scars whatsoever. You will also see an improvement in stretch marks, although this takes a lot of treatments to be able to see an effect in stretch marks. And this will also improve hyperpigmentation. So if you opt to go for a 0.1 to 0.3 millimeter needle length, you won't be going deep enough into your skin to get any of the effects that I've just mentioned, but it will give a serious boost to any of your anti-aging serums and creams that you already use they will get deeper into your skin a lot faster, so we'll be able to work a lot better. Okay, so let's talk about needle length. Now, anything from 0.1 millimeters to 1.5 millimeters can be used on the face. Anything over 0.5 millimeters, I wouldn't recommend you do at home. That is for the salon. So anything over 0.5, I would go and have a proper salon treatment for because it's not as safe to do this in your home by yourself. Anything over 1.5 millimeters is for the body. So any scars or any stretch marks that you've got on your body, that will be done with a needle that is over 1.5 millimeters in length. Okay, so this next piece of information is extremely important and it's all about how often you can actually do this treatment at home. Now it all depends on what size needle you choose, but the reason it's so important is because if you overdo this treatment, you will be promoting the production of something that's called collagenase or collagenase, some people call it, which breaks down and destroys collagen and that is completely the opposite effect of why you're doing the treatment in the first place so it's incredibly important that you don't do this treatment too often so let me go through how often you can actually do this treatment if you choose a needle length of 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters you can do this on a daily basis because you're not actually damaging the skin you're just boosting the effects of your serums and your creams if you choose a 0.5 millimeter, which is the one that I recommend for use at home, you can use this every two to three weeks. Some people say you can use this weekly, but I don't actually recommend that. The collagen that you will actually promote the production of lasts for seven years. This is a really long acting treatment. It really doesn't matter if you do it every three weeks you are still gonna get the effect. So I would say every two to three weeks is very safe for a 0.5 millimeter needle. If you've got a 0.75 millimeter needle, which is the one that I don't really recommend that you do at home because it's a little bit too long, you can do it every four to six weeks. This has a slight discomfort to it, which is why I don't recommend that you do this at home. You are also more likely to get a bit of blood speckling on there if you use a 0.75 millimeter gauge as well. 
The 1.5 millimeter really shouldn't be done more often than every six months. This is a salon only treatment. It is extremely painful. You will need numbing anesthetic on your skin for this. You'll be covered in blood by the end of the treatment. I definitely do not recommend that you do this at home. So for safeness at home, a 0.5 millimeter needle is the one that I would recommend. And you can do that every two to three weeks. Slightly uncomfortable, but only a prickly sensation. It's no real pain, but 0.5 is the one that I would recommend. Okay, so what to expect after the treatment? Okay, so there will be a slight bit of redness. There will also be a little bit of swelling. The redness should clear up within 24 hours. It takes a little bit longer if you choose a longer needle head. There will be a little bit of tenderness there. It does feel a little bit like sunburn for maybe 24 to 48 hours. There may also be a little bit of dryness. The more you do this, the more dryness you're going to get. So definitely don't overdo it per treatment. There may be possible bleeding or bruising, but this is normal for longer needles, not really for the 0.5 millimeter needle. The rare side effect that you may get is hives. Hives are raised, very itchy bumps. If you get this, you should go to your GP, go to your doctor and get some medical advice. Okay, so these are things you must do before you do any derma rolling or whatsoever. Very, very important. Obviously, number one, you need to buy a derma roller and the derma roller needs to have titanium needles on there. Titanium is seriously strong, it's ultra sharp and it doesn't rust extremely important. These range from around about £10 to £400. The ones at around £400 have lights on, they do extra things and the ones at £10 are just your bog standard derma roller. Absolutely fine to use at home and again if you didn't hear me the first time I recommend the 0.5mm needle length. So the second thing you must do is you must look after your derma roller. You need to keep it in a nice little box. Mine comes in a box a little bit like this to keep it safe. Don't drop it and before you use it, every single time inspect it for any bent needles. If you do see a bent needle, throw it away. It shouldn't go anywhere near your face. It will damage your skin. The third thing that you need to do is always have clean hands and a clean face before you start derma rolling. You do not want to transfer any bacteria when you are creating holes in your face. The fourth thing is do not derma roll over keloid scars and don't derma roll over active acne. You can derma roll over acne scarring, but any active acne you do not want to be puncturing and spreading the bacteria all the way over your face. So definitely don't go over keloid scars and don't go over active acne. The last thing that you must do before you derma roll is clean your derma roller with isopropyl alcohol. I have mine in a little spray and I spritz it over, wait for it to dry and then do my derma rolling. I also clean my derma roller as soon as I've finished derma rolling. So I'm actually cleaning it twice before I put it anywhere near my face. Okay, so the last bit of information before I actually go into the procedure, which I know is the bit that you're all interested in anyway, is what to do after the actual treatment. So after you've made all the holes in your skin, you really should avoid any comedogenic products for 24 to 48 hours. That includes any comedogenic makeup. So anything that may block your pores, avoid like the plague. You do not want to be filling all the holes that you've just made in your skin with anything that's going to block anything and create bacteria. Also avoid any alcohol-based products. This will seriously dry the skin. You have to remember that you've created those channels. Everything that you put on your skin is going a lot deeper than it usually would. So you don't want to be putting anything drying on your skin at all. The next thing is avoid any products with active ingredients in there. So like salicylic acid, glycolic acid, anything that's quite harsh. You don't want to be getting that too deep in your skin. Those are surface products and you've made lots of little holes. So they're no longer just sitting on the surface. They're actually going really quite deep into your skin and you don't want anything drying your skin out. Another thing you need to avoid is direct sunlight for between two and 10 days, depending on the length of needle that you choose. If you choose the 0.5 millimeter needle, which 
is the one that I recommend for you to use. You need to stay out of the sun for at least three days. You can go out in the sun, but make sure you protect your skin with a really high SPF because Demerolin will make your skin extremely sensitive to sun damage. So make sure you protect yourself before you go outside. So straight after the treatment, I would avoid anything that is harsh with active ingredients on your skin. So avoid vitamin C creams and also avoid retinoids. Now, retinoids and vitamin C creams are excellent products, but not straight after this treatment. You need to wait at least two days for your skin to start to heal before you actually introduce these products back into your skincare regime. So straight after this treatment, you are going to want to put your serums and moisturizers straight on your skin so they can start working as soon as possible. But please remember these are sinking a lot deeper into your skin than they normally would. So simple is always best. Anything with hyaluronic acid in is absolutely fantastic. I use the Ordinary's Matrixel and Buffet, which is really, really light and also very, very hydrating. Don't use anything with a perfume in it because perfume products usually sit on the surface of the skin and these are going to be sinking really, really deep. So try not to put any products on your skin with any perfumes. Okay, so now what you've all been waiting for, I'm gonna wash my face and hands and get those perfectly clean and get on with showing you the actual procedure. If you've got to this point by fast forwarding, please go back and watch the rest of the video. There's some really important information in there that you need to know if you're going to do this procedure safely at home. So I'll be right back in a second with a fresh face and clean hands. Okay, so I've got a really clean face. I've sprayed my hands with isopropyl alcohol to kill all the bacteria on my hands and I've also cleaned my derma roller so it's ready to use. Let me just show you the actual derma roller needles themselves. So this is the one that I recommend. This is the 0.5 millimeter needle length. You can hardly see the needles there. They are that thin and this doesn't hurt at all. There's a little bit of discomfort, but if there's too much discomfort, it means you've gone over that area far too many times, so you need to stop and move on to a different area. So firstly, I'm gonna split my face into four sections. So I'm gonna go straight down my nose, and then I'm gonna go underneath my eyes and across. So all the cheek is in one section, because this is the easiest part to do, because it's the most vast area and the spongiest as well. So you're gonna take your derma roller and you are going to place it in the center of the forehead and you're just gonna start going up and down and across. And you're going to continue to do that. Taking it off when you get to the end and reapplying it. You don't want to be going in any hole that you've created more than once. You want to keep it moving. And you're going to carry on doing this for more or less one to two minutes, changing direction as you go. So you're going to go up and down, you're going to go left to right or right to left, and you're going to go diagonally as well. As you can see, my forehead is slightly pink now, so I'm going to move on to the next section, which is the one that's directly next to it on the other side of my forehead. I don't know why, but this procedure makes me sneeze. So if I sneeze, I'm sorry. Also the same as plucking my eyebrows. Plucking my eyebrows also makes me sneeze. Now once you've done every single area, you can go back to your problem areas and just give them another quick once over so if there's anywhere that you've got some really deep lines or anywhere where you've got quite a lot of scarring like acne scarring i have that on my cheeks you can go over and give that a little bit of a second go but don't overdo it because too much will do you more damage than good once you find that it's a little bit too uncomfortable definitely stop This really shouldn't be a painful procedure if it's done properly. So I'm going to move on to my cheeks and around my eye area. There is a specialist derma rolling tool that you can use for around the eye area. I don't own that personally. 
I'm just very, very careful when I'm going around the eye. I tend not to go up towards the eye. I would rather go out to make sure that I do not hurt my eye at all. If you're going to do under this area, right in the bag itself, don't use a 0.5 millimeter. For this, you need to use something that is a lot shorter than that. I would recommend maybe the 0.1 or the 0.2. Personally, I miss that area out altogether because it freaks me out a little bit, to be honest. So the cheek area is the biggest area and it's also the spongiest area, so it's the easiest area to do. So I don't do it over the nose, haven't got any scarring on there anyway. You can do the neck with this, you can do the chest, you can do your arms. You can actually do it on your head to stimulate hair growth. It's an amazing treatment. I'm going to go on to this side now. If you do have any acne on your face, you want to make sure that you go round it, not over it. This cannot be done on active acne. You don't want to spread that anywhere else. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to go back over the areas that are problem areas. If your skin is tender, stop here. You don't want to go over anything that is tender. So my problem areas are on my cheeks, which I've got my acne scar in, and I've got some fine lines and wrinkles, especially here on my 11s and some on my forehead. So I'm just gonna go over and just do that section again, but not too much. That's all I'm gonna do. And then on my cheeks, There and there, going nowhere near my eye to make sure I don't slip. Smile lines. And that is it. I'm going to place my derma roller in its case so that I can clean that in just a second. And I'm going to grab my serums. I don't actually use creams because they tend to clog my pores. One, two, three, four drops of the buffet from the ordinary and the same one, two, four drops of Matrixel as well. Rub those together in my hands and get that straight on my face. This will sting a little bit, there's slight discomfort and your face will go bright red. That's completely normal. So that is the procedure done and dusted. All the serums have sank into my skin. Really, really happy with that. It just feels a little bit like sunburn on my skin. It's not too tender at all. If it's too tender, you've done it too much and don't do it as much next time. So please remember, no comedogenic products on your face. That includes makeup for the next 24 hours. No alcohol-based products or anything harsh of any kind, which includes any retinoids or vitamin C creams for at least 24 to 48 hours. Avoid any active ingredients, so any glycolic acids or any harsh exfoliants on your skin and avoid direct sunlight unless you've got a serious SPF on your skin for the next two to 10 days, depending on the needle length that you have used. Whew. 
This is an amazing treatment. It will improve your scarring, it will improve your skin texture, it will trigger the production of collagen and elastin. It's absolutely fantastic if it's done safely. Don't do this more than every two to three weeks if you're using the 0.5 millimeter needle length. Stay safe and you will get great results. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please do give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, there is a watermark in this corner. If you click on it, it will take you through to my homepage where you can subscribe. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye.